trade, and this is a short-term trade. And I'm basically looking, if you see this up here, the geometry is in place, the volume is in place. Let me change the time frame. And what we see here is the geometry and all the elements that I want, including a, let's try divergence. And I'll change that to yellow. There we go. Okay. So we have the divergence I'm showing you here. I can see all of this on the tape and volume. And geometry is in place and resistance is in place. This is a near perfect trade. And this is one that if I was a leverage trader, I would be taking right off of this because on a percentage basis, this would be very small risk for large reward um, right from this area down here um, from the 38 mid 38 500 range. Uh, so it's a small range and let's go here. Let me go over and put other buy points. After this works out, I'll show you the buy points where I'm going to be covering uh, short hedges as well. These are separate trades, um, but I want to put them down uh, for the future because I know what I'm looking at. And yeah, okay, uh, that, that's those are areas down below, and that's from the larger trade from up the 47, 49 uh, area. Um, and right now, what we're going to focus on is let me expand this, and what we're going to focus on is the 40k 500 mark. And what I'm looking for is for us to get back to that red box above. Okay, and that's the low 40K to the mid 40K area. And the reason why is it's very simple. You have the geometry and the short term uh, trade. And I could see the prints. The bigger money that is coming to the marketplace that are trading are going to uh, stabilize the market and add technical patterns and what I trade off, they're going to uh, equalize the geometry and the, the, the trading, and it's going to just be good. You know, I'm going to eat lunches, their lunch, other traders' lunch, who knows? I'm, I'm basically trading uh, between the, the different uh, people. And um, so there's the, the trade that I'm looking at, and this should probably happen within a day, I would imagine. Uh, I marked it out and it should complete by tomorrow and we'll see what I'll do is I'll come back and update you know I've already posted this um, to several traders and let them know the deal and in the room um, so I'll put that in there as well and yeah so that's what I'm looking for uh, and it's pretty. That's all I can say. Uh, I'll also add another one uh, to this uh, SUI, um, but I'll, uh, too many things I got to do right now. So right now, let's look at the bigger chart, and you can see where I was looking for us to go down to, and we almost got into this area. But of course, right before this, the the zone, um, this buy came into place because it, that's what's drawn in the chart. And you can see the element of um, uh, resistance in the larger and the volume, how it's decreased and how it's moved and what's likely to happen up there. We'll probably test that red line um, from there. That's the previous geometry and that will turn into resistance more than likely. And we'll go from there. Uh, onward and upward, I'll come back and uh, when the trade clears and everything, and, it, and you can see it education-wise, uh, you can see everything from over here. Um, what I'm looking at is other zones of interest, and those zones are going to likely come to fruition in the past. They're going to be attractors. They're kind of like magnets, I guess you can say. But anyway, um, let's stick with this. I'll be back 
and I will see you in when it, with the chart is updated with the prices and everything and not get crazy and then I'll break down the short-term price movement you can see the buys this over here later on that's likely to happen this is going to be support it's my guess and we'll see all right see you in the next the trade has completed I'm going to show you where we're likely to go uh, what happened and break the trade down for you this is purely for education and uh, yesterday let's pull up the uh, I'm showing you the geometry of the chart right here but let's zoom in and we'll go to a five minute I think that would be the best way to look at this now and yesterday when I was posting um, the price was under the 38600 and the 38550 uh, 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 and under mark and it went as low as almost 38500 I believe that did right let's see what was the low on there um, yeah 38501 uh, on Coinbase anyway there's other exchanges um, but in that range right there that's 600 about a 50 to even that hundred dollar range this was your opportunity and where do you trade this well let's go through the chart shall we all right so this is the setup this is my resistance point I knew that ahead of time uh, I was looking for us to bounce back up to this level up here from the geometry that was created all right so as we zoom in, we can see the geometry right here. We had the nice flow down here, elevating volume on the downside. And then it pulls up real quick to create this range to, uh, from, what was that? 39,371 all the way up to uh, the low 40K area. So it's about a thousand. And then slowly moves, creates our point three. So we got one, two and then three alrighty then again bounces off of this area here goes up to here slowly but surely very orderly volume notice very limited very small it's just ticking along very much controlled and uh, goes up to this point here creates a little bit of a divergence plateaus over here and becomes resistance so now we have the one, two, three here for our first um, part of this uh, pattern. Then we have one, two, and then the move, the plateau, and then the collapse, and down to this area down here. All right, now from this point on, divergence forms. Divergence, how do we tell? By the volume. The volume increasing, um, increasing, increasing, then drops off very quickly. So you got kind of a, a bump up right here and then creates and follows down from this point. All right, see that volume spike right there? This is where your divergence is formed. This is where it tells me we're reversing. This is where I pay attention to the tape. I go to multiple exchanges. I look what the prints are telling me. They tell a story. And uh, I'll probably go over that again with uh, new people. Uh, because I have a couple of books that you know I think are good to read and they deal with the psychology of trading and as well as the um, how to get into the rhythm it's kind of like dancing in a way so anyway we have this divergence that formed right down here um, volume drops off starts to move up activity you can't see you have to see the prints and it was right around here spikes up creates little W's here, little W's back down, little M's back down. And at this point is where I was interested. Volume reverses right here as we make the new low and retest this area down here. This is where I could see that this was going to reverse. And that's why I posted it in the room. I let other traders know, you know, who are um, learning or I made them aware. Let's put it that way. Of what was likely to occur and what I was looking for ahead of time and uh, that's what I do uh, 
then we created this bottom right here. Now from here you can make a logical uh, and an educated type of leverage trade. This has the perfect elements for an actual leverage trade of where you would risk a very small amount to make a much larger amount. I've seen the way certain traders with their multiple levels and so forth, where they increase their um, risk versus their reward. So they can have more wins uh, with less profit. It's stupid. I am completely against it. And I won't, I won't, I'll, you're not a trader to me when you trade like that. You're a marketer. And um, it's, it's silly. I'm not going to even go over it. But whatever. This is an example of a trade that would be worthwhile for a leverage trade. And that's why I made note of it. Now, short term trades, I usually don't. Uh, tell people about because uh, there's no point. I don't trade with leverage and I trade bigger ranges, but when I get trades like this, this is an easy setup for me. Of course, I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, so anyway, we uh, had this area right here um, posted in the room so people were aware of it and what I was looking for. So this red box up here in the low 40k to that 4500 and I think like 20 something in that range it went right to the very top of it uh, highest uh, 4527 so this was perfect um, found resistance right there and, and here we are right now now what do I expect from this point anyway you saw the elements right there and I'll post trades like that in the future. I might even go into some of the altcoins um, just because, you know, I'll, I'll, do, I'll show you another trade that I made uh, short term. Uh, and the educational value should be good to you because of the fact that, I mean, it, it's pretty close to as perfect as you can get technically, uh, like this trade. And one of the key elements because there are new traders coming into this and their their volume is showing up and the way they trade show up uh, shows up on the tape um, it you're gonna get bigger ranges and movement and it's gonna be more fun for me as a trader because that's that's my bread and butter I guess you could say um, but anyway um, let's go over and look at what we can do and look at in the future because this is just one little trade right here. We could see that have happened. Where do we go from here? Well, from here, I'm looking for us to still go down to these levels. People are asking, well, what about this area down here? Very good. This level is still relevant. We are now trading up to a resistance point. Now, statistically, there's a good chance that we can break above here and get up to levels up to here. Uh, to the low 41k, maybe up to this plateau, back up to here. Um, and the reason why is because there's just going to be a natural volatility that's going to come into play with new money. There's new money into this landscape now. And these are these ETFs and the hedge fund managers and, and so forth. They, they bring their own um, systems and, and uh, algorithms and uh, it's an interesting world, uh, but they bring their own gravitas to the, the field. And uh, uh, that makes, that's where opportunity lies to me. Um, but so far, everything is very orderly and things are moving as it should when you have a lot of participants in the marketplace. I don't see anything out of character. Where would we go from here? Well, let's see if this area breaks right here and then we go down not to test here again. Uh, we're going to go and test likely here and under. Uh, so that's the next thing that I'm looking for in Bitcoin. End of story. Nothing interesting. Ethereum, boring. The range on it when it was bottoming uh, is ridiculously small. Um, so not that interesting. $100 range, wow. Uh, so Ethereum is very dull to me, and uh, its slope is larger. It has more 
uh, of a downside capability, in my opinion. And I would be looking for that 2100 still from here. It could be indicative of um, this type of movement, indicative that it's going to have a, a bigger shift. It might actually lead Bitcoin uh, with the way it's moving. But anyway, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll do that, update that in, in another video. Um, XRP, boring too. It went up to 49 cents, all the way back up to no, right around 52 cents. So <laughs> on a percentage basis, dull. But what is not dull is this one coin that I love, is this SUI. And I traded this um, with Bitcoin because it was easy to see. Again, this was beautiful volume, beautiful technicals and volume reversals, patterns, everything fit into place. This is my idea of uh, a better trade than even Bitcoin. So I went over and uh, took advantage of it. And I put more money into this because it was just ridiculously easy and it trades on a lot of exchanges now. And it's a top 50 coin. And I believe that in the future, this is gonna be in a top 20. Uh, I like the volume on this. Uh, people are interested. It has great movement, and I think it's going to have a great future. It's going to have wild swings, more than likely. Um, but when you get a trade like this, this was my buying area. Let's, let me show it to you right here. I guess I can do a circle. Hey, hey look at that. I never used that. Um, so this right here, this blue box. From the 102, 103 about, all the way down to uh, just about 101 um, was the buy area. These little tweezers right here, it plateaued and you'd have to go down to a real small chart. Like I use tick charts as well as uh, minute charts and even second charts sometimes. I, I like to look at things and see how the, the volume, it gives you a really clear picture when you break things down in multiple charts in the same uh, thing. I could have 10 different um, time frames and ticks and uh, charts all going at the same time, looking at the same exact pair. I have setups for the screen to really uh, see the movement. It gives me clarity. And this was a great trade right when it went down to the under the 102, uh, $1 and $0.02 range. And um, uh, what I was looking for is that for it to bounce and to hold this zone, and it did. And it all starts from here. Uh, and you really have to pin into the, the volume and the geometry of this. So you had to move to the bigger shift down. And let's see, because I said that we're going to get a pullback. All right, I have double U formation up here. And here's the line that I'm following right here. And we pulled, we created this pattern right here. Now this has great volatility in it. This is a young um, asset. And I like it as much as I liked Avalanche in the past. What are some of the ones that are really like Solana, Link, Chainlink? Um, uh, those are some of my favorites of altcoins, and this one right now is my favorite of all our altcoins. And when I saw the opportunity on this one, when it created this little uh, pennant-like pattern that you see right here in its geometry, and the volume is what attracts me more than anything. The way it trades on the tape, and like I said, it was telling me a story. So when he had the one two and three. Now you have this one too that shifted real quick. I'm not interested. This is the real body. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Your five key points on this pattern that makes the top one, two, and the bottom one, two, three. Uh, this right down here told me everything I had to do. This would be another one that would be have been a great short-term trade for a leveraged trader where you can again um, risk very little to make a lot 
I don't want to see multiple levels of where your risk, your gamma and your, your beta are out, out of whack. They're, your risk is just, what the F are you thinking? You're trading like you're trying to lose money is when I see other traders trade. But whatever, that's their deal. Uh, this was a great trade. And here was the selling point around 128 all the way up to the 131 cent range right here. Let me show you what it did. I'm gonna zoom in again on the five minute. Created a divergence up here. And you'd have to really zoom into the volume. The volume's more hectic on this because it's more active. Um, but you could see it on different exchanges and it was telling me a story. Uh, right from this point, the 128 and 50 cent range up here creates these three points. One, two, three. This is your breakdown point. This is where it was likely going to reverse. Plateaus, bounces, oscillates around this uh, line from the divergence it formed from here. And then breaks back down to that the main line, bounces off of it, gets back up to here. here let's push this out a little bit. It's about right there and fails here and then goes down goes below it breaks back up to the main line connects over here and here and now is going to go down more than likely down to this line right here this is the key this is where so you draw it right from one two this is where it breaks back under so there's some discombobulation right here but it, it basically, this is what you're really looking at, this box right here. So it's likely going to retrace to here. And we'll see where it goes because I, I believe Bitcoin is going to pull back and uh, make some low. So this is going to, you know, more than likely, it's going to follow this line. Let's go to a four hour. Back on down. I just think this is a, a great pair and it's going to, you know, I could trade this all day long. Um, so you had that, that run and this was on a percentage basis, a fantastic trade. You know, I don't have to tell you percentage wise, this was uh, great in a very short period of time, just like with Bitcoin. Um, of course, Bitcoin does not have the ability to move as much as it. But when you're able to zoom into the volume, like I was showing you there, and then you step back and you look at the multiple time frames, you can see all of this happening real time. And, you know, pay attention when I, I post stuff because I am not doing it for, um, I'm telling you something, I'm telling you a story. That's why I informed a bunch of traders. I hope they learn uh, and they take this as an educational example. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. Uh, other pairs, uh, nothing really of interest. Uh, uh, the ranges on XRP and Ethereum were silly, too small, not interesting, not interesting. Um, you know, as far as this short-term area right here, uh, there was nothing of interest. Uh, Silver, I did get asked about that, and I'll just put this back in here. It's just ranging right now. I want to see what it does. It's, again, it is solidly in a buy, and at some point it's going to break out and get back above this 26 and start to move. But right now it's just oscillating around. It's staying between, you know, these two markers right here. Um, it hit its bull market time way back here when it pulled, pushed back here. Uh, you know what I was looking for. So nothing to do right there. Just basically wait. Um, same thing with our, our crushed scallop play. This one that's dropped off the moon. But this one is setting up a, a one, two, three on declining volume. So this one could be interesting. This could be a reversal in a short period of time. I've already put, I've got a few percentages in this. I'm not really interested in adding any more to this. I could if I wanted to, but eh, no. 
I see better trade opportunities. This is more of a long-term play. And again, I, it's a high risk play, so it's only worth at the max 5% of total assets, which I'm not gonna even go that much into it. Um, a few percentages is fine. And again, I'm looking for numbers that go all the way back up to the 140, around 139, 140 on a percentage basis. I don't have to tell you that's going to be a good return. And I'll just wait it out. Nothing to do. Um, I, I'm not a person that is emotional about trades. If this thing collapses and never comes back, then so be it. Um, that's part of the game. Uh, it does happen. It's rare. I will say that. I have a pretty good win percentage. But, hey, I'm not invincible. Uh, there are times when I don't win. And that's okay. That's, you know, I win most of the time. So that's all I got to do. And I win more than I lose. So those are the key elements of being a good trader is a, you win more than you lose. And that goes with risk reward, proper risk reward, not these leverage trades that I see all these different signal providers providing. Those are jokes. Those are made to go over and, and market. So they can show that they, they won most of their trades, but at the same time lost money. What's that? Useless. That's what that is. All right, so you win more than you lose, and you win more often uh, than you lose. So you, you have a high, higher number of winning trades, and you, you have a better risk-reward characteristics. Those are the two main elements of trading. And uh, also, you have no emotion. You see things clearly and logically, and that's what I try to teach here. And so I hope you enjoyed the video. That's going to do it for me. Um, I'll do another video. In, what is today? Probably Saturday. And get back on track because my whole week has been discombobulated because of people that are traveling and decided they want to visit me for some strange reason. Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> it's the only thing I could say. But anyway, um, enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.